Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the steps on how to stretch watercolor paper. But before we actually begin to stretch the paper, I wanted to point a few things out. What you see behind me is a watercolor painting that I just finished. It's large. It's about 30 inches high by 40 or so inches long. It's painted on Archer's cold press watercolor paper, 140 pound. That's my favorite paper to use. And you see it mounted on a piece of homosote. Here's a piece of homosote cut for mounting watercolor paintings that are about 22 by 30, full sheet. And the homosote is reinforced on the back with a frame that I make. This prevents the whole homosote from warping as the paper shrinks from the wetting process that is used in stretching it. This painting that you see mounted on my easel is much larger. It's mounted on a hinged support that allows me to change the angle from vertical to horizontal or anything in between. Most of the time when I'm working on a large painting like this, I am painting vertically. I feel most comfortable. It reduces pressure on the lower back. And what we see here is the brown tape that I use to attach the watercolor paper to the homosote. And I also use staples, and the tape is actually varnished to make it waterproof. Why do I do that? I do that because I flow so much water into my paintings, especially when I'm doing the background in a painting like this. The water's just dripping all over the place. If I didn't seal the tape, it would become so wet it might start to lift off from the paper, and that would be problematic. Here's a piece that I recently stretched to make a small painting, and there's no need to reinforce the back with extra wooden supports, because small pieces don't cause the homosote to warp. The basic tools that I'll need to stretch the paper are, of course, my watercolor paper. This is a sheet of Archer's cold press 140 pound paper that I've cut from a larger sheet. My homosote mounting board. This mounting board does not require back bracing because a small sheet like this will not warp the board. brown packaging tape. It's large. It's two inches. This is perfect for stretching watercolor paper. Of course, a ruler. Pencil. I use a technical pen. Staple gun. And I don't go crazy with the staples. I use relatively shallow staples. Here's what I mean. The staple is only a quarter of an inch deep. You can get staples that are really huge. No need for that. It just adds difficulty to the pulling out process when you're removing the paper from the board. This is perfect. I happen to really like this staple gun. It's very easy to work with. Sponge. something to soak the paper in. Whatever I use to soak my paper in, I make sure it's absolutely cleaned. This happens to be stained a little bit with watercolor, but there's no soap residue, and that's extremely important. You don't want anything that could affect the surface of the paper and damage it. A couple of other things that we're going to need to use in stretching the paper are some glue and varnish, water-soluble varnish. You could use Liquitex gloss medium if you like. You don't have to use this kind of varnish. This is the varnish that we're going to use to seal the paper to make it waterproof.
Now let's clear all this away and begin to stretch the paper. The first thing that I need to do is place my paper in the soaking bin, bring it over to the sink and fill it up with some water. At this stage, make sure that the paper is thoroughly wet on both sides. No air bubbles are present that would prevent the water from touching certain areas of the paper. The water is relatively cold. You don't want to use hot water because that'll cause the size in, that's in the paper to leach out and you'll be stuck with a big blotter. It will no longer be good watercolor paper. Also, you don't want to leave it in too long. I think an extended period of time could also damage the sizing in the paper. So don't put the paper in here and go out to lunch and come back an hour later. Lightly covered, let it stand for 15 minutes. The paper has been soaking for about 15 minutes and it's thoroughly saturated. The next step is to mount it to the home soak board. The arches watermark that is imprinted on the paper indicates the side of the paper that should face up. This is the side that you will paint on and it is slightly more textured than the back side of the sheet. Before I remove the paper from the soaking bin, I pre-cut lengths of tape in preparation for attaching the paper to the board. It's important to have everything prepared in advance to eliminate the possibility of unexpected delays during the mounting process. I have four lengths of tape ready to go. I also like to make sure that my paper is lined up with the edges of the mounting board. A way to guarantee this is to use a T-square and a waterproof magic marker to make guidelines. Next, I carefully lift my paper out of the soaking bin and allow the excess water to drip off. Then, I float it over to the mounting board and position the paper along the guidelines. I neglected to mark the paper with a one inch border along its edge, so now I have to do it while the paper is wet. You should mark the paper with a one inch border before you actually soak the paper. Now that the paper is properly marked with a one inch border, it's time to apply glue to the cut strips of paper and fasten the paper to the board. I could simply wet the gummed side of the paper with plain water, but I prefer to dampen the gum side with glue. This enhances the adhesive quality of the tape. After lining up the tape along the borderline, I rub it down with a slightly dampened sponge. Having positioned this piece of tape here, next thing I'll do is dampen the long length and position it here. I place the tape sequentially. I don't go to the opposite side. That might result in a buckle. Dampen it with a two inch brush. And place it on the paper. Line it up exactly with that line that I drew. Now, I rub it down with my sponge. See how I'm doing this? Working around the perimeter of the paper. Wipe off any excess glue from the top and press it down. The final strip. 
But we don't stop here. The next thing that I do is I staple it. That minimizes the potential of the paper pulling out from underneath the tape. Let's move this to the side. I usually staple just about a half inch from the top edge of the tape. And I place my staples approximately two inches apart, a little bit more maybe. first few steps are finished. See how simple that was? Let's let it stand for 24 hours and I'll come back tomorrow to finish it off. It is 24 hours later and the paper has completely dried. It's absolutely flat and if I was to pour water on this right now it would not warp at all. It would remain flat. Why is that? Well, it's because we soaked the paper for about 15 minutes in a bin of water. The water absorbed into the fiber of the paper. The paper expanded because it swelled with the water. When it was thoroughly expanded, after about 15 minutes, we placed it on the mounting board. It's at its maximum expanded potential, and you tape it down. As it dries, it contracts and becomes extremely tight. The beauty of this is once you wet it, it will not expand beyond its original size. And since it was flat at that wet size, it'll remain flat when re-wetted. What's the last thing I do? This is optional. You don't have to carry it this far, but I do because I've seen in the process of painting tape lift up and the paper begin to warp under it. So what I like to do is seal the tape with an additional layer of varnish. Using a flat paintbrush, very carefully apply the varnish, making sure I don't get any on the, the paper. So you, you have to have a steady hand, you have to be careful here. If you don't want to varnish it, you could cover the, huh, a little piece broke off, but I think you get the idea. You could cover the paper tape with a protective layer of plastic tape that would also create a barrier. All right, the paper has been stretched, allowed to dry. I coated the dry brown packaging tape that's two inches wide with an additional layer of varnish that'll make it waterproof when it's dry. And there's nothing left to do. I hope you enjoyed watching my video on how to stretch watercolor paper.